Hello, hello. Welcome to the Kings International Christian Center, a place where champions are raised and territories are taken. It's another Sunday, another day, a day that God has made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says this mass is anew every morning. I do believe that this mass is anew in your life this morning in the name of Jesus. Um, if at all things have been hard for you this week, I just want to pray for you um, this morning and decree and declare that regardless of what you're going through, your faith will not fail and your faith will produce in the name of Jesus. Your faith will produce results in the mighty name of Jesus, that your faith will not fail. Despite what anyone may say, your God is a strong God, is a rock of ages. It's gonna be with you, it's gonna sustain you, it's gonna ensure that you cross over to the other side in the mighty name of Jesus. So before we start, let's begin with a word of prayer. Everlasting Father, the Bible says the entrance of your word brings forth light, also bring forth understanding. As your word goes out this morning, we decree and declare there shall be revelation, there shall be uh, understanding. Light is going to be illuminated in people's hearts, people's mind. Father, at the end of this all, Father, people will know you better, will understand you better, and they will serve you better. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we believe. Amen. Now, this has been declared our year of shining. The Bible says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. So rise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Darkness may come on earth and take darkness as it is right now, but God promises that for you, His light is going to shine over you. And that is our portion, that is our privilege in the name of Jesus. Now, our topic this morning is high dimension thinking. Higher dimension thinking. God wants us to have a higher dimension thinking. We've been going through this series called Fearless Faith and subtopic today is high dimension thinking. And may God cause you to have a high dimension thinking. Now, in talking about high dimension thinking before I even go to the scripture of the day, high dimension thinking is thinking like God. Ensuring that you say only what God says. Ensuring that you believe only what God believes. Now, sometimes it, that might land you into trouble because you might speak contrary to the opinion and contrary to what is politically correct. But let God be true. Let every man be a liar. Keep saying the word of God. And as you decree the word of God, it simply means that as you think like God, he will begin to lead you to the place where he ordained for you before the foundation of the world. Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. In other words, you can never be able to accomplish the task that God sent you here on earth for without, without faith, without walking in faith. So as you talk like God, as you walk like God, as you do things like God does things, he will lead you to the plans and purposes that you did for you before the foundation of the world, and you'll find yourself accomplishing the task that he gave you. You, you find yourself accomplishing the potential that is inside of you because it is only him, him who knows why he sent you here on earth. And you're going to understand as we read the scripture this morning, understand that from the beginning, what God made was perfect. It was beautiful for his situation. What God built, what God designed, the man was perfect the way he made him. And so as you will uncover in the scripture, you realize that, that that original plan and intent of a thing, which is purpose, is, is, is still very possible for you and I to be able to get into our original purpose and intent that God ordained for us before the foundation of the earth and to accomplish his intended purpose. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. So without wasting too much time, let's go into the word. Um, Genesis 1, 26 is our scripture for the day. That's what the Bible says. Then God said, let us make man in our image. From Hebrew word, Selem, which means resemblance. According to our likeness, let them have dominion. From Hebrew word, Radar, which means prevail against, reign and rule. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every crippling thing that creeps on earth. From this scripture, we can see some things that God designed man to do or what God intended man for. Number one, God is a God of purpose. Everything that God creates, he creates it with a purpose in mind. Because he is so organized, he begins with purpose in mind. He begins with end in mind. In fact, the Bible even says that Jesus Christ was crucified 
before the foundation of the world. It began with the, with the end in mind. It's so, so meticulous in the way that it does things. God is not haphazard. God is not um, uh, um, is disorganized. God is very organized and very meticulous the way he does things. So even regarding man, God knew why he created a man. He knew for what reason he created a man for, for what purpose and how he was going to look like and what he was going to eat when he came on earth, how he was going to live, what air he was going to breathe. Can you imagine if God sent us on earth and there was no enough oxygen and so we had to manufacture oxygen? Do you know how costly oxygen is? Or maybe we came on earth and found there was no water to drink, right? And we had to manufacture water or came on earth and realized that that that, that, that um, the ocean and, and sea was everywhere and, and there was flood everywhere. And so we had to, be, to build um, our homes on top of, of, of floods and so on and so forth. Can you imagine how confusing that was? So God is very meticulous, very organized in the way that he does things. So he knew how man was going to look like, what man would do when he came on earth and what he was going to to accomplish while he was here on earth. And so God tells man to multiply and replenish the earth. Let me pause there and say that in every seed, there's a tree. In every tree, in every seed, there is a forest. In every bird, there is a flock. In every, in every sheep, there is a flock. In every cow, there is a herd. In every boy, there is a man. In every girl, there's a woman. In every nation, there is a generation. So God had put potential in everything that he designs. So even we as human beings, the reason why we need to have a high dimension of thinking is because God has put potential in us. And it's only when we begin to have a high dimension of thinking can we begin to unveil what it is that God has put inside of us. And so we begin to start thinking like God and start thinking like the creator and start following the creator and, start, um, and continue to pursue the creator the creator will begin to unveil to us why he made us, for what purpose he made us, for what generation he made us, and for what, for which people he sent us to, and what he has put inside of us. And I decree and I declare, the potential that God has put in you will not die in the name of Jesus. The purpose for which God sent you here on earth for will not die, that you will, you will, you will calibrate your, your thinking to become a higher dimension thinking. And stop thinking like men. Stop thinking like what is common, what is popular. Stop thinking like what is trendy, what is sophisticated, what, what sounds more intellectual. Begin to start thinking what God has said. Let those be the things that consume your imagination with the wonder of his beauty, which he has created in you. Number two, God gave man blessing. He didn't just create a man and then send him on earth without support um, or infrastructure, but he gave him spiritual support. He gave him certain authority. The Amplified Translation says God's blessing authority. So God gave him authority to come with here on earth. In the book of uh, Genesis 1 verse 28, the Bible says, Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful, which means bear fruit and multiply, fill the earth and so do it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that, that moves on earth. So God blessed man before he sent him here on earth. So you came loaded. You came blessed. We came loaded. We came blessed. So we are blessed in the name of Jesus. Number three, God gave man provision. He didn't just send him here and then um, to figure out what he was going to eat. God gave him provision. Providence for the vision. In the book of Genesis 129, the Bible says, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. God, For you it shall be food. So God never made man to be in want. God never made man to come down here and hustle. He, would, he preordained the food the man was going to eat, the water the man was going to drink before he brought man here or here on earth. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I decree and I declare, in this face of this pandemic, you will not want. You will not be in want. In the name of Jesus, God is going to supply all of your needs 
according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Um, number four, God created a self-sustaining ecosystem. God created a self-sustaining ecosystem. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 131, then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God, the self-sustaining ecosystem was completed. The man was made beautiful and perfect. That's the way God wanted him to. Um, and all the creation of God was beautiful, just like the way God wanted. And the Bible said God was, was satisfied. The oxygen that we breathe was already created by God. The shoes that we wear, it comes from cow. Um, cow's hide, which was already in existence. The suit that we wear, it, 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 already, it, it was already in existence because through um, the wool. Um, the, the best books that you admire, it comes from pepper, comes from trees that God created. So in other words, everything that the man would need in terms of innovation and creativity, God supplied it in the form of raw product. But even us, when we came on earth, we came in raw form. We came in like a seed in a seed form. And so God wants us to be able to discover by following him who we are, what our potential is, what it is that he has built inside of us. My prayer for you this morning is that you will uncover, you will discover what it is that God has put inside of you. And when you discover and uncover what it is that God has put inside of you, you'll be satisfied, you'll be fulfilled, and you will be very, very, very joyful. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Number five, God gave man command. God gave man command. God told man in the book of Genesis 2.16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may freely and conditionally eat the fruit from every tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge and cognition of good and evil you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of disobedience. And then number six, God gave man helpmate. Let me reverse back to number five. Number five is the one that brought man the greatest uh, trouble. God gave man provision. God gave man clothes, food. God gave man helpmate. God gave man company. God gave man air to breathe. However, man, God told man that the day that he will fail to keep this instruction, you will surely die. And as you know it, the Bible says that man ate the fruit that was forbidden. And even though he did not physically die, he became spiritually separated from God. Death followed later, physical death followed later, but spiritual death was immediate. There was a separation between man and God. It was not the provision that made man fall because man had enough food to eat. It was not the loneliness that made man uh, fall because man had a companion. It was not luck that made man fall because man had everything provided for, including oxygen that he breathes. It was disobedience that made man fall. God did his part. Man failed on his part. Because man thought he could live in separate from God. God gave man instruction. Man was to live within those instructions that God gave. As long as he obeyed the instructions, as long as he heeded the word of God, as long as he followed God, which is a higher dimension of thinking, as long as he followed those things step by step, he was succeeding. The moment he kept his eyes away from those instructions, man fell. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 3, verses 5 to 7, for, um, and this is the, this is the uh, devil coming into the garden to lie to man, and he finds a woman. Verse 5 says, For God knows that in the day you eat of it, that means the fruits, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now look at number verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom, she took the fruit and ate it. She also gave some of to her to some to her husband and he ate it. Because of curiosity. Because of wanting to know whether there was something else that God had kept hidden from man, man fell. Because of that, there was a separation between man and God. God did not ordain separation to be there. 
God ordained man to operate inside of God. As long as man was listening to God, as long as man was communicating with God, as long as man was walking together with God, as long as man was, was in fellowship with God, man was excelling. But the moment man kept his eyes away from God, man began, began to fall. A man has been falling ever since. Today we have people who, who believe in a same-sex marriage. Today we have people who don't believe in the existence of God who has made them. Today we have people who live as if they made themselves. And as, as a result that the more man keeps, keeps falling away from God, the more his mind becomes warped, the more, the more his mind becomes reprobate, the more he's moved away from, 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 from God, from, the, from, from higher dimension thinking. But my prayer for you is that this morning, we are going to return back to higher dimension thinking. We're going to return back to fellowshipping with God. We're going to return back to a place where we are hearing God speaking to us. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Previously, man ran to God. Whenever he heard the footsteps of God walking in the cool of the garden, man would run to God, to our fellowship with God. But after the fall, whenever man heard the footsteps of God coming to the cool of the garden, man ran away and, and, and hid himself. Man was, was now running away from God. So instead of running to God, man was running away from God. And because of that, man could no longer begin, to be, be, no, could no longer get the source of power or the source of high dimensional thinking from God anymore. He began to start reasoning in himself. He began to make, start making wrong choices, wrong decisions, like running away from the one who made him, like running away from the source of life like running away from the source of his strength and from the source of his power. And as he did that, the more he did that, the more he began to think um, wrong in the wrong pattern and the more the enemy now had, had a chance to be able to, um, to, to hurt him and inflict hurt upon him. My prayer for you is that we're going to come back to God. We're going to walk with God in the name of Jesus. Man was not designed to stay away from God. Man was not designed to stay away from God. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, all, they are and were created. So everything was created to pleasure God, including man. We were made for the, for the pleasure of God, to pleasure God, to bring joy to the heart of God. That's, what, that's why we were created, to pleasure him to serve him, to honor him, to fellowship with him, to walk with him. That's why we were created. We were not created to come and, and serve our own self and to live for our own pleasure. These things are good, but these things don't, do not have life in them. These things don't have life. They don't have, things are good, but these things do not have you know, eternal reward, right? Man was not created to function outside God. Man was not created to live outside God. In fact, the Bible says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The separation of man and God is what exposed man and allowed man to lose dominion, made man to lose authority, made man to lose, to, to lose his God-given capacity, and made man to lose his God-given potential. But I decree over your life this morning, because of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, that, 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 that breached that separation, well, a decree of your life that you will not lose your dominion, you will not lose your authority, you will not lose your God-given capacity, and you will not lose your God-given potential in the name of Jesus. So, higher dimension thinking can only come when man walks closely with God. Higher dimension thinking can only come in when there's fellowship between God and man. When the fellowship between God and man is restored, that's when higher dimension thinking can come. Higher dimensional thinking can only be restored can, can, can only be restored when man gets back to the original intention which God made him for. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it simply means that for you to have faith, which is a higher form of thinking, a higher dimension of thinking, for you to have faith you must be able to hear from God. And how do you hear from God? You hear from God by being close to him. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice, but the strangers, they will not follow. But what about if the sheep wanders away? 
What about if the ship strays away? What about if the ship goes away from God? Can, it, can the ship still be able to hear the voice of the shepherd when the, the ship is far away? The answer is no. And that's what sometimes we do. We walk away from God so that when he's speaking, we're not hearing him. He's speaking to us, but we are far away. We cannot hear him. And so my prayer for you this morning is that we're no longer going to be straying away from God, but we shall continue, continuously walk with him. As we keep walking with him in concert with God, following after his footsteps, following after his principles, following, following him after his words, obeying him in our heart, desiring to know him more and more, better and better, that we're going to start having a higher dimension of thinking. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus, that when you come into, into your house, there will be peace in your house because you have a higher dimension of thinking. When your wife or your husband begins a quarrel, they will not do that, but if they begin a quarrel, high dimension thinking will remember that my position as a woman is to honor my husband. If it is a, if it's a man that begins the, if it's a woman that begins a quarrel, the man will remember that my position as a husband is to love. Love is bad. Love is kind. You know, all these things. So it means without hearing from God, you cannot, we cannot have faith. And faith is a higher form of thinking. The Bible says faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So it's only through faith can we be able to have a higher dimension thinking. Remember what I said in my, in my conversation? Faith is a higher dimension, it's, it's a higher form of them, it's a higher dimension of thinking. Because faith, without faith, is impossible to please God. So if you have to have a higher form of thinking, it has to be a thinking that lines up with the Word of God. Yeah. And then from here, then we get to fulfill our purpose. I'm combining those three things together. My prayer for you is that you will get it. It will inspire you. It will motivate you in the name of Jesus. For you to hear from God, you must have the ability to hear when God speaks. That will be your portion. So what happened when man fell? When man fell, he lost the wavelength. When man fell, he was no longer able to communicate with God because God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in, in spirit and in truth. So when man fell, there was a separation. So man could no longer be able to hear God. If God wants to talk to us, he will, he will bypass your intellect. He will bypass your emotion. He will bypass your will. Sometimes you are emotional about things, but God is saying it's a totally different thing. So if he wants to get to you, he bypasses your emotion, your emotion, your will, your intellect, and goes right into your spirit. And he speaks to you so that you know in your knowing that this is the way to go. You come to a crossroad of life. You want to choose this job, this career, or that career. God will lead you through his peace. The Bible says, let the peace of God be like an umpire, like an umpire in your heart. You know, he will lead you through his peace. He will show you. He will, he will bypass all the statistics to begin to tell you that this is the place, this is the path that you need to walk on. Because sometimes the path of, of the path may look right, but the end of it leads to death. So my prayer for you is that you will hear the frequency of heaven. You hear the frequency of heaven. Today, man has lost his foresight because he has lost his frequency with God. Man has lost his vision because he has lost his contact with God. Man has lost his purpose because he has disconnected from God. My prayer for you is that you will not lose the frequency with God. You will not lose your purpose as a result. Of, you will not lose your purpose that God ordained for you on earth before you came here on earth. That you will not lose it in the name of Jesus. Because man has lost his purpose in God. There are songs that he could have written, but he has not written them. There's some music that he could have written, but he has not written them. There's a book that he could have written, but he has not been able to write because he has lost his purpose with God. There's some architectural design that only he could write, that God ordained him, ordained him to be able to uncover, but he has not been able to uncover because he has lost his touch with the living God. There is some model, some designs, there's some capacity, there's some innovation that he could have come up with he's not been able to do because he has lost his original intent, the reason why he was brought here on earth. There are some plans that has not even gone into his head. There are some plans that God wanted him to be able to actualize, but it has not even gone into his head yet. Why? 
because he has gone away from the source of his power, from the source of his strength. And I want to decree in your life this morning that you will reconnect back. You will reconnect back. You will reconnect back with God in the name of Jesus. My prayer for you is that in this life, you will not just become a spectator in the journey of life, that you will rise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You'll, you'll rise up and do that which God ordained you to do. you rise up and become that, that whom God made you to become before he sent you here on earth. He made you beautiful. He made you perfect. This is the way that he wanted you to be. As you arrived on earth, maybe you came across certain things that stopped you or hindered you from being the best that he called you to. But this morning, I call you forth, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. As long as man was hearing God, he was functioning at a higher dimension. As long as man was hearing God, he was functioning at a higher dimension. The moment he, he stopped hearing from God, even God threw him out of the garden of heaven because he was no longer able to be able to take care of what he was sent in on earth for. Can you imagine? God had to send man out of the garden of Eden. Man was made to come and tend the garden. But when he lost touch with God, God had to send him away from the garden of Eden. Could it be that there's some things that God called us here on earth to do? But when we came here on earth, we decided to walk our own walk do our own things, serve our own purposes. And as a result, God moved moved that thing away from us or moved us away from that thing because as long as we're not hearing from heaven, we are not fit to be able to perform the tasks that God ordained for us. The purpose is the original intent of a thing. And our purpose can only come from God, who is the original maker who made us. With, 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 with things in store, things ingrained inside of us, things deposited inside of us. There's a way that he, he made us to function. There's a way that he made us to talk, to walk, to carry ourselves. But when we lose that purpose, when we become disconnected, we cannot have a high dimension thinking. And so this morning, I decree and I declare over your life that higher dimension thinking is going to return in your heart, is going to return in your life, is going to return in your spirit in the name of Jesus, that would be your portion. Man was not designed to pray outside God. The moment man began to pray outside God, he lost his provision, he lost his authority, and he lost his purpose, and then he became confused and twisted and convoluted. And a decree of a life that you will not become confused in this life. You will not become twisted in this life. You will not come this you will not become disorganized in this life. But you're going to find out what, what purpose it is that God sent you here on earth for. And you will achieve that which God sent you here on earth for. As you begin to have a high dimension thinking, you will find yourself walking in the path that was preordained for you before the foundation of the world. I'm here this morning to encourage you that you're not a failure. You might have tried certain things and you, you failed at them. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. I'm here to encourage you that there's something in you that God put in you. God did not send you here on earth empty-handed. He sent you here on earth with something. There is something in you. There is something unique about you. There's something beautiful about you. There's some melody in your voice the world needs to hear. There's some books in you the world needs to read. There is something, some rich deposit in you that you need to bring forth. And I decree and I declare that you will bring it out in the name of Jesus. Every time a man thinks he's wiser than God or he cannot pray outside God, he makes mistake. Every time a man thinks that he's wiser than God, that he can think better than God, that he can, he, can, he, can, he can function outside God, he makes a mistake. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 14, verses 1 to 2, the spiritually ignorant fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The Bible calls him a fool. He has said in his heart, there is no God. The Bible says they are corrupt, they are, they are, they are committed repulsive, unspeakable deeds. There is no one who does good. Look at what verse 2 says. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there is there any who understand, act wisely, who truly seek after God, longing for his wisdom and guidance. So God wants to give us his wisdom and God wants to give us his guidance. And this morning I decree and I declare that when God comes to give you his wisdom and his guidance, he will find you waiting. He will find you ready. He will find you worthy to be able to carry that, uh, that wisdom and that guidance in the name of Jesus. That he will not find you unworthy. 
it will find you worthy to be able to carry his wisdom and guidance in this generation. And I decree and declare you're the man for the job. You're the set man for this hour to be able to accomplish the task that God has sent you here on earth for in the name of Jesus. You're the one who's going to bring out that innovation in that sector. Maybe you're listening to me, you're your medical doctor. You're the one who's going to come, come up with that next wave of invention in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're here, you're listening to me and you're a political leader. You're the one who's going to walk into that house and come come up, come up with, with a new set of laws and regulations that will benefit humanity in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Our dimension thinking are, 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 is walking in the ways of God. High dimension thinking comes from seeking the ways of God. High dimension thinking is God. High dimension thinking comes from fearing God. Let me repeat that again. High dimension thinking are walking in the ways of God. High dimension thinking comes from seeking God's ways of doing things. High dimension thinking is patterning our life after God. High dimension thinking comes from fearing God. May you fear God. May you pattern your life after God. May you think the thoughts of God. May you breathe the thoughts of heaven in the name of Jesus. That in this generation, you're the one to bring forth liberation of humanity. It is you, God has sent. It is you that's going to come up with all those, 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 those plans, purposes of God on earth. You're the one who's going to bring them forth on earth in the name of Jesus. So don't sit back and feel sorry for yourself. Don't sit back and think that you're nothing. There is something in you. And as you begin to start thinking in a high dimension, those things that God has put in you, they will begin to start coming out. So my prayer for you is that you will find your purpose in life. My prayer for you is the original intention that God ordained for you before he made you, before he placed you in your mother's womb, that they will, those things will become very clear to you in the name of Jesus. The original plan that God made you, made you, but will be materialized in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that you will become consistent, consistent. Once you find out what it is that God has called you here on earth to do, you will become consistent. Sometimes it might not even be paying you, but as you find it, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Be consistent with it. Be consistent. And as you do that, God is going to send dream helpers to be able to help you. Dream help us to be able to support you. People that were ordained to help you in this journey of life. And I decree and I declare of your life, dream help us are going to find you. They're not going to, they're not going to be blind. You're not going to be blind to your dream helpers in the name of Jesus. They will see you, they will recognize you, and they will come to support you in the name that's above all names, in the name of Jesus. As you begin to walk in the path that God ordained for you before the foundation of life of, of, the, of, the, of your life, before the foundation of the world. Bef the, those paths that God ordained for you, as you begin to start taking those steps, as you begin to walk on those walks. God is going to send help your way. He's going to send provision, providence for the vision in the name of Jesus. High dimension thinking then is thinking inside God and not thinking outside God. It is breathing the thoughts of God. It means longing for God's wisdom and guidance. And this morning, may you long for God's wisdom and guidance. Now, how does God think and how does God operate? Book of Mark 11 from verse 1, we find Jesus is coming from Bethany. And it's with his disciples. And as they walk, they come across this fig tree. This fig tree, as, as is bigger, um, this fig tree, he, he was hungry and he wanted them um, to fruit from the fig tree. And as he come closer to the fig tree, he realizes that the fig tree does not have um, fruit. And so Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree and said, Your fig tree from this day henceforth, let nobody eat a fruit from you. And he walked away. Nothing seemed to have happened in the material world. Nothing seemed to have happened physically. So they walked away. But the Bible says the following day as they were walking on the same path, the disciples heard Jesus curse the fig tree. And as they walked there, then on the following day, they saw the fig tree had dried from the root and they remembered what Jesus spoke concerning the fig tree. And as they, as they, as they marveled over what had happened, Jesus told them something. Look at what Jesus tells them. The book of Mark 11 verses 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith, the Greek translators say. Have the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, that is God, God's kind of faith. That is how God operates. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. 
Therefore I say, number verse 4, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Mark 11, 22 to 24. So how does God think? How does God operate? God looks at a situation and he speaks what he wants to see happen in that situation. That's how he thinks. When God saw darkness, he did not say, oh, it is so dark here. No, because that's not what he wanted to see. What he wanted to see happen is what he spoke. So Jesus then says to us, the God kind of faith looks at the situations and calls for those things that are not as if they are and they come into existence. That's a higher form of thinking because a lower form of thinking will look at a situation and call it as it is. You walk into your family and maybe you find that there is so much luck and then you just say, you know, we, will, we are poor. That is a low form of thinking. A higher form of thinking looks at this situation and say, well, you may look like what you look like, but I remember the Bible says that Christ became poor that I may become rich. And so I declare and I declare that I'm rich in the mighty name of Jesus. That's a higher form of thinking. A higher form of thinking looks at wellness of the body and feels, feels that maybe I'm not well in the body. It doesn't, it doesn't say that I, I'm so sick, I will die. Higher form of thinking say, no, by a stripe I was healed. And so I decree and I declare in my life that I'm healed. From a crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I'm healed. I command every organ, every tissue to begin to function in the perfection in which God made it to function. In the name of Jesus, you begin to start calling your tissues to function. You begin to start calling your organs to function. You begin to start calling your heart to function. You begin to start calling your lungs to begin to start functioning in the perfection in which God made it to function when God created you. That's a higher form of thinking. It causes us into the not as if they are, and they come into existence. When God saw darkness on earth, he called forth light. When God saw, 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 saw water and, and land all come all, all confused together, he separated the land and he separated the, the, the sea, and he called them the way he wanted to see them happen. God called those things that are not as if they are, and they came into existence. So in the face of this pandemic, you, you could be tempted to speak what looks politically correct. You might be tempted to speak what looks um, what looks like uh, logically correct. You might be tempted to just say what is what is uh, what everyone else is saying. But God is calling you to a higher form of thinking. That you begin to start calling those things that are not as if they are, and they will come into existence. Begin to call forth healing for your body. Begin to start calling healing into your community. When he start calling forth that that, 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 that this, this disease and sickness is was out of our life, out of our society, in the name of Jesus, beginning to decree and declaring anxiety and panic will not grip our town. In the name of Jesus, begin to de decree and declaring that, that, that provision will come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to start saying those things that you want to see happen in the mighty name of Jesus and they will show up in the name of of Jesus. So that means that the we need to start asking questions, high dimension thinking means that we pray, we have to pray inside God. That's the reason why man cannot predict the day that he will die. Man, man did not make himself so he cannot predict the day that he die, that he will that he will die. Man did not make himself so he cannot, he cannot predict, he cannot, he cannot determine his purpose on earth. Man did not make himself so he cannot he cannot say what he can or he cannot do. Look at what God tells Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah 1.5. Jeremiah was arguing with God and telling God that, God, I'm unable to do what you call me to do because I'm just a youth. How can I go and, you know, declare your word to these people? I'm just young. I don't have this. I don't have that. Look at what God tells in the book of Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So God was telling Jeremiah, was surprising in Jeremiah. That God knew him, not when Jeremiah became a boy, not when Jeremiah was born, but before Jeremiah was born. He is the one who placed Jeremiah in his mother's womb. So God is the one who placed us in our mother's womb. And as a reason why, regardless of the kind of family that you come from, it cannot determine why you end up in life. Because God is the one who made you. God is your manufacturer. That's why people cannot look at you and say that you will fail. How do they know? 
Do they know your end from the beginning? Only God knows your end from the beginning. Only God knows what he has preordained for you. Only God knows what he has designed for you in the future. That's the reason why high dimensional thinking then simply means that I'm going to cut cut away what anyone else might say. I'm, I'm going to cut out all some form of criticism. I'm going to cut out every, every form of, 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 of rebuke or every form of, you know, um, every form of negative uh, instructions. I'm going to focus on what God has said. And as I keep declaring the word of God, even if it doesn't seem like it, but I just keep declaring it, keep, keep speaking it, keep speaking like God, and eventually things will begin to start materializing. There, there's going to be some form of alignment and realignment. And before you know it, the dead bones are going to come forth. The dry bones are going to come forth and are going to form a mighty army in the name of Jesus. So I decree of your life this morning. May the dry bones in your life begin to start forming mighty armies in the name of Jesus. Jesus, the people will see you and marvel at what God has done. So God tells Jeremiah that you will go and do. Verse 7 says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am youth, for you shall go to all to whom I sent you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord of hosts. So says the Lord, God is with you. God told him that don't say that you cannot do this. Sometimes people say that, you know, I can't go and do this because I don't have money. I can't go and start this ministry because I don't have, um, I, don't, I don't know how to talk. I can't go and start that education because I don't have the finance for it. I cannot go and start that business because I don't, I don't have the capital for it. If God is the one who has sent you, he has, he has already made provision. He has already made provision. So step out in faith and do what God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. And you will encounter success. A decree over your life that you will encounter success. As you begin to move, as you begin to start thinking in a high dimension of thinking, thinking like God, talking like God, looking at situations that 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 could make people uh, uh, people to to just you know collapse and just fall. But you're looking at it with with that boldness and confidence of God kind of faith. As you begin to take it with the bull's horn, and it will start materializing in the name of Jesus, and that will be your portion. I will be a portion. So God tells Jeremiah, don't say that. Don't say that you do not want. God tells Jeremiah, don't say what you don't want to see happen. Because that's not how God speaks. God only says things that he wants to see happen. So don't say that, you know, don't say that I'm a youth. I cannot do this. No. Say, do what you want to see happen. In the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, we see, we, we see the story of David. David and Goliath. And something fundamental happened. When David goes into the war zone, as he enters there, he has no strength, physical strength. He has no armor. He has no um, protections. He only has a sling and a stone. In fact, he's so ill-equipped for the war that when the, the Philistine giant sees him, he begins to laugh at him. But then, then David says something that is fundamental. First of all, he says to the, to the Philistine that I come to you in the name of the Lord. I don't come to you in my own strength. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And then he begins start declaring what he wants to see happen in that battle. In the book of 1 Samuel 17 verses 46, this is David speaking. He says, this day the Lord will deliver you into in my hands and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the, of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. So you see, it doesn't have, have armor. It doesn't have, you know, uh, the sword. It doesn't have all these things, but he says that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut off your head. How is he going to do it? But he learned how to speak those things that are not as they are. And as he enters into that environment with that kind of knowledge and understanding that God is with me, God is, he is, is going to ensure that I win this warfare. As he enters that environment with that kind of understanding, he was able to become victorious. And as you also go into that environment with that kind of knowledge, that kind of understanding, that God is with you, you want to win that warfare. In the name of Jesus, you will win that war and you will succeed. David had no physical strength. He had no armor. How is he going to cut the giant's head? But he knew that for him to be able to succeed, he had to speak. He had to first of all speak those things that he wanted to see happen. May you begin to start speaking those things that you want to see happen 
in the name of Jesus. High dimension thinking speaks those things that they want to see happen. Don't speak those things that you don't want to see happen. And I pray for you. God will give you insight. God will give you wisdom to be able to know what to say and what not to say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As you begin to start speaking like God, as you begin to start releasing words of God into that situation, you are going to end, you're going to find out that God is giving you the fortitude, the resilience, the strength, the wisdom to know how to be able to operate in that dimension that he has called you to. And that will be your story in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, what should we do with this message? How can we apply this message in our lives? Number one, understand that God has given you potential. God has given you potential. Everything God makes, he makes it in a seed form. He never, he never gives us things in complete form. Even all things, everything that I'm putting on this morning, they've all been designed by somebody. Because they were not, the, God brought them in a raw form. But it, was, it, was, it was up to the man to uncover what God what, what God brought. So, dormant, dormant, the word potential means dormant power. It means hidden talent. It means unused success. It means reserved power. It means untapped strength. It means capped capability. It is potent. It has power, but it still needs to be unleashed. And so my, my prayer for you this morning is that may you unleash the potent power that God has put inside of you. So understand that God has given us, all of us, we have potential. That's what we have. But it's for us now to develop the potential that God has put inside of us. All of us, we have potential, but we have to develop the potential. If you let the potential to die, then your dreams will die. The purpose which God sent you here on earth will die. May you unleash the potential that God has put inside of you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we need to know that God has given us our gift, our talent, our ability in seed form. But the seed must be planted. It must be watered. It must be weed, weeded. It must be kept. It must be protected from every um, harsh climate condition. Right? And as you do these things, you will start seeing your potential emerge. As you begin to start thinking like God, walking like God, talking to God, he will, he will lead you. He will lead you to the path that, that he done for you, that he prescribed for you before he brought you, sent it to your mother's womb and you're not going to miss it in the name of Jesus. Number two, we are responsible for the potential stored inside of us. We are responsible for the potential stored inside of us. Proverbs 25 verses 2 says, It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Let me repeat that again. We are responsible for the potential stored inside of us. Proverbs 25 verses 5 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. So whether we succeeded, whether we have succeeded in the past, or fail in the past, you know, we, we still have potential in us. We still have unused energy inside of us. You know, when you put on a radio, or oh, sorry, when you put a battery in a radio, and you don't put on the radio, you have potential, you have potent power inside of that radio. So it is not used. And my prayer is that it will not become like batteries in a, in a, in a car or a, or a radio that's not being used, that we will continuously be used Whatever potential, whatever um, potential God has put inside of us will be unleashed in the name of Jesus. So whether we have failed in the past, we are still have potential. Whether we have succeeded in the, in the past, let our success not stop us from going forth for bigger things, for greater things that God has in store for us. God still has more mountains for us to climb. God still has, has bigger mountains for us to be able to, to, to find, to be able to, to still discover in the name of of Jesus. Previous success can prevent us from seeing more, from becoming more, from discovering more. My prayer for you is that previous success will not hinder you, will not stop you from being the best that God has called you to be. It says that unless you do something beyond what you've done, you will never grow or experience your full potential. Unless you do something beyond what you've done, you will never grow or experience your full potential. My prayer for you this morning is that you will, you will grow your potential in the name of Jesus. Refuse to be the same person next year. Uh, 
the same person as you are this year, next year. And that will not be your portion. Refuse to die without exploiting your gifts. See, by the time you end your life, by the time your life comes to an end, you'll have, you'll have done everything that you set out to do. And God will give you the grace. God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the strength to be able to accomplish that in the name of Jesus. Number three, understand that it's only God, it's only when you know your purpose can you carve out your significance. Only, no, only when you know your purpose can you carve out your significance. Now, significance doesn't come from the kind of car that you drive. I know you're driving a very nice car, but I see next year they're going to come up with another car, maybe that has more uh, gadgets, that has uh, more um, the artificial intelligence, a car that maybe is self-driven. self, is self What are you going to do when that happens? Is it that always continuously innovating and coming up with new, um, new innovations? These new innovations are passing, new innovations are coming. So what are you going to do? Are you going to keep changing? So your significance doesn't come from the kind of car that you drive. Your significance doesn't come from the kind of house that you live in. You live in a nice house. That's good. But, but that's not where your significance comes from. Your significance doesn't come from social media status. I know that you have a lot of likes, a lot of people following you on social media. But that's not where your significance is. Your significance doesn't come from the level of your education. I know maybe you have a lot of degrees. But that's not where your significance comes from. Your significance comes from discovering who God made you to be. It's, 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 it's carving out your niche based on God's plan and purpose for your life. That is the only thing that will make you stand out. That when you come into the crowded sea of 7.8 billion people on earth, the only thing that will make you stand out is the plan and purposes of God concerning your life. And I declare and I declare that you will not be lost in the crowd. You will not be lost in the crowd. You will stand out. You will stand out in the name of Jesus. See, Jesus knew who, who he was. They tried to make him a king. He refused. They tried to kill him before his time. He refused. They, they tried to give him so much recognition. Many times he turned them down. Why? Because he knew why he came. And until his purpose was fulfilled, he was not going to go anywhere. He wasn't going to try anything. He wasn't going to try to become somebody else. He was just going to be him, Jesus, teaching, doing miracle, walking, doing, going around, doing good, because that's what he came on earth for. My prayer for you is that you're not going to be lost in this maze, in this confusion, in what is trendy, in what is common, in what is big, in what is everyone is talking about. No, you're going to carve out your niche based on what God sent you here on earth to accomplish. That will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, thinking at higher dimension comes when we know there is still more left for us to fulfill. There is still more left for us to fulfill here on earth. And, you know, thinking higher dimension will continuously make you to draw closer to God. The people who, when God answered their prayer, they run away from God. When God, um, when God, when they have nothing to worry about, they have rent, the rent is paid, there's money in the bank, some money in the bank, they have a car, it's, there's, there's fuel in the car, school fees is paid, there's nothing to worry about. That time they don't go to church. But you see, a higher dimension of thinking will continuously tell you that there's something more. There's another, another, another dimension of God we still need to uncover. There's still another relationship that we need to be developed with God. There's another high dimension of thinking. There's another, another voice of God that we need to hear. There is another way we need to do things. You know, high dimension thinking will make you know that there's more potential for you to still explore. My prayer for you is that you're, going to, you're not going to sit down contented with life as it is, but you're going to continue to pursue God. And as you pursue Him, He will continue to unveil to you more. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number five, Taking at higher dimension involves exercising our authority. So if you need healing, we can bodily say, I'm healed. Because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 53, from verse 4 to verse 5, the Bible says, by his stripe, we were healed. And um, if you need if you need provision, you know, you speak, um, you speak what the Bible says, Philippians 4.19, my God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You don't wait for the needs to show up before you begin to declare these things. These are things you wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord. This is the day that you made. I may rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you because all my needs are met. I have no care in this world. You are my shepherd. I shall not want. You shall lead me beside the green, green pasture. 
You know, you de declare these things over your life, over the situation, over the circumstances, or over, over, the, over life. You are speaking like the way God speaks. You are thinking like the way God thinks. And that would be your portion in the name of Jesus. If you need peace, instead of being worried, instead of being uh, having anxiety, remember what the Bible says in the book of Philippians, any human understanding is protecting my mind, my mind in Christ Jesus. I declare that the peace of God is in my heart. The peace of God is in my heart. I have the peace of God in my heart in the name of Jesus. If you need joy, remember what the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, Nehemiah 8.10. It says, and the joy of the Lord shall be our strength. So you decree that I have the joy of the Lord. It is my strength. It's a beautiful day God has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The joy of the Lord is my strength today. I should, I should declare these things. These are the victory that overcomes the world. That will enable you to be able to go to places where people don't go to. Do things that people don't don't normally do. People of sometimes people have told you that your you people that look like you don't always get this kind of results, but you will get those kind of results. Why? Because God is with you. And then people may look at you and say, "People like you are not welcomed here." But you're gonna go there, and you're gonna be welcomed there. You know why? Because you are declaring the word of God. You are thinking like God. You are putting higher dimension of thought in your words, in your speech and action. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Number six, when, we, when, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it seemed like nothing happened. So many times when we release the word of God in the atmosphere, when we think like God and speak like God, sometimes it may seem like nothing is happening. But in the realm of the spirit, something is happening. The Bible says that something was happening because when they came back the following day, they found that the fig tree had dried from the root. It means that when Jesus Christ spoke, when Christ spoke, his words went to work immediately. And as he was sleeping, the word was working. As we keep releasing the word concerning what God has said concerning us, as we are sleeping, the word will be working. So this, mo this morning, today, before you go to bed, make sure you declare the word of God over your life. In the name of Jesus, before you go to sleep, make sure you declare the word of God before you go to bed. In the name of Jesus. And you will see it begin to materialize. You will start seeing your situation begin to change. You start seeing your environment begin to start changing. You start seeing your relationship begin to start changing. God begins to start bringing the right relationship around you. God starts changing your environment around you because you're thinking like God now, talking like God now, walking like God. That will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. In case, in case, in case you're you are, you are struggling with sin. The way to be able to defeat sin, begin to declare what God has said concerning you. Begin to say, take authority and say what God has said concerning you. Begin to know that sin will no longer have dominion over you. In other words, sin no longer has dominion over you. Begin to know that, that this sin, it has no power over me. It cannot attach itself in me. I'm a child of God. I'm sitting together with Christ in a heavenly place where I have dominion over principalities and power. These things are underneath my feet. Um, um, Colossians 2.15, you know, know that these things are underneath your feet, that you're, you're, you're victorious with Christ, sitting together with Christ in the heavenly. As you begin to start understanding that, then you know, you no longer be afraid of sin. You no longer be afraid that maybe I might sin or fall short of God's glory because you know that you can take authority and refuse to allow those kind of things to get into you. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. It might seem like nothing's happening on the surface, but on the inside, things are working. Things are happening. And that's how to think. How to, that's how to have a high dimension thinking. Talk like God. Walk like God. Do the things that God has said you do. Say the things that God has said um, uh, do say. Even if it's contrary, even if nobody's believing you, you just keep declaring because God has said it. When David went into the field to fight Goliath, nobody believed that David could do it. People were just waiting to see his head cut off, you know, falling on the, on the other side. I know some people probably, uh, they probably closed their eyes because they didn't want to see what a sight to behold. But, you know, as he went in there, he knew that I have God on my side and I'm going to say only what God has said concerning this situation. And when he declared what he wanted to see happen, then he went ahead and executed it. So declare what you want to see happen. Then go ahead and take action concerning that. When you want to start a business, declare that your business will succeed. When other businesses are falling apart, yours will succeed. Yours will be the only one who will be among the few ones which will succeed. Declare that and then go ahead and start the business. You know, you over your marriage 
they right now they're saying that so many marriages are collapsing so many so many so many cele celebrated marriages are collapsing if you declare in your house your marriage will not collapse in the mighty name of jesus declare speak it speak what you want to see happen in your home you want to have a happy family you want to have happy children you want to be able to raise children who are going to become giants on earth begin to declare that this, this is what is going to happen in my life concerning my situation your story will be different in the name of jesus i decree over your life one more time your story will be different it might happen to other people but for you god is going to guard you god is going to safeguard you in the face of this pandemic now people are saying that we're going to run out you know the nation is is the the, the nation is gonna go into financial <clears throat> financial depression, but keep saying to yourself in my household there will be no financial depression. We're not going to have shortfalls. We're not gonna have depression in our family. Our provision since it comes from heaven and we serve a kingdom that cannot fail. We are continuously going to get we are continuously going to get resources from heaven. God is continuously going to nourish us in the name of Jesus, and that will be your portion. I said that will be your portion. That will be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So, so think like the way God thinks. Talk like the way God talk. Look at situations like the way God will look at them and say only what God will say concerning that situation. Regardless of how dark it is, regardless of how tough it is, regardless of how confused it looks, declare what you want to see happen according to the word of God and God will, say, will, 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 will support you because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, I just want to say thank you. The Bible says the entrance of your word brings forth light. It also brings forth understanding. Your word has gone out this morning. Lord, we decree and declare, let there be understanding. Let there be courage, Lord God. In the face of this pandemic, Lord, we decree and declare, there shall be courage in the name of Jesus. We refuse to allow fear to go into our heart. We refuse to allow fear to become to, be, to become a friend in our household. In the name of Jesus, we choose faith over fear. And Lord, we choose to depend on you, to trust in you, to say the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Ah, lay pride, Ushda. They said that I was once younger, but now I'm old. I never seen the righteous forsaken or received begging bread. Ah, to say that, 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 that those people, those who keep their eyes on you, will not be ashamed or embarrassed. Oh God, we give you thanks, we give you glory, we give you honor because your word is true, Lord God. To keep saying that all things work together for good to them that love God, them that have been called according to his purpose, Lord. To decree these things, oh God, in the face of this pandemic, Lord, we shall decree them. We shall say them, Lord God, even if it doesn't make sense in your glory, because you have so asked us to say what you have said, O oh God. We thank you, Father Lord, because that would be our portion. We give you glory, Lord God, this morning. I just want to pray for my listeners, Lord God. Those who need you, Lord God, that they may give their hearts to you. Give your glory, touch them. Give them salvation, Father. Those who are, who are watching us this morning, and Father, they need food. We pray for them, Lord, that may you provide for them, Lord, because you are our provider, Lord. May you send forth provision to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for our nation, our country, Lord God. Let your grace fall on our nation. Father, Lord, we decree and declare that we shall not fail as a nation. King your glory, the Father, the leadership that we that you have sent to us king of glory shall be the leadership that you've sent from heaven oh god we give you glory we cover them with your blood for each and every one of them lord please for restoration of churches lord god back to fellowship from which you intended when you set up churches father we thank you because these things are done in the name of jesus and now lord we give you glory we give you honor for today be glorified oh god continuously in our lives in the name of jesus who brand of living Amen. Now, friend, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God shine his face upon you. May it be gracious to you. But before you go, it's our giving time. Bless this blessed time. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible says in the book of um, Luke 6, 38, the give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking the creator, running over. Man shall give to your bosom. The Bible also says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency may abound unto good work. This morning, we'd like to encourage you to give. Members of KRCC, we see giving our tithe, and God is still blessing us. God is opening up doors for us, having their jobs, and still giving their jobs. In the face of this difficult position, there are miracles that have happened in our church. People have got, gotten jobs in the face of these things, new jobs, better jobs. With better, with better salaries, some of them increased um, twice, you know, 
in a, in a, in a, in a very, very uh, miraculous way. As we keep our eyes on God, God will open up doors for us. And as we give this morning, I want to pray for you. And may God open up doors for you in the name of Jesus. If you're looking for work, maybe you've been, you've been released from your work, or maybe you've, 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 you've been told that you're going to take pay cut. I want to pray for you. And as you keep giving in the house of God, God will ensure that those pay cuts are discarded in the name of Jesus, that those pay cuts don't materialize in the name of Jesus. That's my prayer for you. And uh, so all the information and instructions on how to give is at the bottom. Please go ahead and give. Give joyfully. Give it from the bottom of the heart because the Bible says God loves it. Because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Don't give out of compulsion. Don't give out of being forced to give. Give because you love God. And as you give Him, God is going to bless you, going to shine His face upon you, and it's going to be gracious to you. Amen. Let me pray for you even as you give. Father Lord, even as your people give this morning, Father, we decree and declare more is going to be given to them. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Men, is going to, men are going to give to their bosom. In the face of all this pandemic, Lord, Father, we thank you and we decree, we declare they shall not face shortfalls. Lord, we thank you because they shall not be without provision. Lord, we thank you because you're going to bless them and you're going to open doors for them. We give you glory because it is done in the name of Jesus who brand open living. Amen. Friend, go ahead and give. God bless you. God shine his face upon you. May he be gracious to you. God bless you. Till next Sunday, God bless you. Amen.